Hi, Rodrigo. Good to see you. Robert, good morning. It's great to see you as well. I really appreciate you taking time to chat with me today. And uh, I want to welcome everybody that's joining us on the live stream. And if you could take a second and in the chat box, give us an idea who you are. I know that will show up, but where are you from? And if you'd like to add any context for why you're joining today, we certainly can look at that. And that's helpful to us. So thank you for joining. Thank you. Let me uh, open up the conversation. Uh, Rodrigo, I just want to say, you know, for me, in the time I've been here in Northwest Arkansas, it's, it's just become so clear. You're such a key part of the community. I'm grateful to know you and know of the work and that you and e for all do here. So uh, I'm really excited to have this conversation today. Thank you, Robert. I'm excited too. And, you know, uh, I think that um, I appreciate so much those words that you just shared with me. And But let me be clear, it's not only me, it's also my team. And I want to recognize that I have a great team uh, that is working with me, with the community to try to help the community as well. But thank you. It's great to be here and uh, excited to have this conversation with you. Excellent. Excellent. I feel very much the same. So I think it's always about the team. And we're fortunate at the Walton Family Foundation to also have just a fantastic team of committed professionals working on this work. Um, I'm particularly call out Elan Lai, who works on the entrepreneurial area, which you'll hear more about in a second. Um, let me just lead off with, with a couple of things to help acquaint the audience. Um, I'm Robert Burns. I'm the director for the Home Region Program here at the Walton Family Foundation. And the Walton Family Foundation is a family-led foundation uh, based here in Bentonville, Arkansas. And home region encompasses two distinct geographies here in Arkansas. One, which is Northwest Arkansas, which we'll be talking about today, the counties of Benton and Washington primarily. And then we also have a long history of work in the Mississippi Delta, working now in two counties in Arkansas, one in Mississippi. We have strategies that cover both of those geographies. Uh, one, which is specific here in Northwest Arkansas, the second in the Delta. And today we're going to really focus on the work that we've been working on around building out the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Northwest Arkansas is an area that is rich in history when it comes to entrepreneurs. You think about the companies, the Waltons, the Tysons, the Hunts, and many others that now are calling this region home and have for generations that are really built around this entrepreneurial spirit. And we feel in the region, as we look to make it the most vibrant and inclusive possible in the country, it's really essential that all entrepreneurs be given the chance to realize their dream and to really uh, allow those ideas to come out and have organizations like e for all that support those efforts. So as a foundation, we are certainly proud to support the efforts of e for all and we're going to specifically talk more about that today. Uh, with, with that, Rodrigo, I'd like to just open it up. I know I know you a bit, but would you mind just telling the folks here on the live chat a little bit more about yourself, um, how, when you came to Northwest Arkansas, a little bit of your history? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, clearly from my accent, um, you know, I, I'm, uh, I was born and raised in Mexico, in Mexico City. I moved to Texas um, in the early 2000s to get my master's degree at the University of Arkansas, uh, at the University of Texas in Austin, and and from there we lived in, in in Dallas for many years. I my career was in marketing and uh, strategy and consulting, and uh, and then I started my own business uh, back in 2013. It's a Mexican food business. We operated in Texas and we still operated in Texas. And, uh, and in 2020, at the beginning of the pandemic, we moved to Northwest Arkansas, thanks to uh, Walmart, that my wife uh, at the time was working for Walmart. Um, and, uh, and, you know, when, I, when we moved here, I met a lot of uh, people, a lot of great people, because that's the, the one, uh, I think, common theme that I found in Northwest Arkansas. There's a lot of great people living here in this area. But anyway, so through them, I heard about the opportunity of joining e for all uh, the Walton Family Foundation wanted to, you guys wanted to bring him here to Northwest Arkansas and you were looking for, uh, they, they were looking for a, an executive director to open the office here. I, I saw the mission, I loved what they were trying to do and I fortunately got the job. So um, I got to open the office here back in 2021. 
Wonderful. You know, Rodrigo, I think you really wanted to say University of Arkansas, but you, you had to say <laughs> yes. I appreciate that. Uh, thanks for sharing that history. I think it's always great to hear how folks have journeyed here. And you hit upon something that I will echo, which is unique, not just to Northwest Arkansas, but I think the state of Arkansas is the willingness that people have to help each other. And, and I hear it all the time. I know you've reflected on that too. And that really gets to kind of the root of um, one of the questions is when you think about the mission of you for all and the work that you're doing, we often talk about underserved populations, underserved individuals. And sometimes it's hard to understand, like, what does that really mean? Could you just give a little more about what that means and, and who the folks, the families, the individuals are that, that you primarily work with? Absolutely, Robert. So uh, really, underserved individuals are people that, uh, for some reason, aren't having access to the same resources that the rest of the of the community uh, are having. Um, so it it could encompass a variety of different groups. So from women to um, to people of color, black, Latinos, Marshallese. Um, to other groups that aren't necessarily getting the same support and the same, uh, you know, access to the same tools and resources that the, than the, than other other people in the community. So that's who, who we're trying to help. Um, and and really, you know, at A for all, we don't care the color of your skin. We don't care about the. Uh, you know your gender, your orientation, anything. We all all we care about is that you have an idea or a business, either or, and that you are willing to put the work behind it to make it successful. That those are the two things that we're looking in every entrepreneur that joins our program. Thank you. I re I really appreciate you providing that additional context. And when you um, when you talk to entrepreneurs, and I know you do this daily, probably hourly, you're talking to an entrepreneur. And I've had the privilege of meeting some of the entrepreneurs that have come through the E4ALL program and some that are in it currently. Give me, give me, give me the audience a flavor for what do you hear? What are the challenges that they face? What are the, the things that they need and that they're looking for E4ALL to provide? Well, that's a, that's an easy and a hard question to answer. So um, I think that it, an easy question because there are definitely a lot of barriers that they're facing. The, the hard part is that, you know, it's a little bit nuanced. Every group, every individual is facing different barriers. But uh, in general, as, as a whole, I would say some of the biggest barriers are systemic barriers. Um, such as limited access to capital, uh, limited no business knowledge, and those limited social business networks that over time we have built when we've had a, you know, work in a corporate environment, in an office environment, you build those networks or you went to college. And sometimes they didn't have that opportunity. So those networks are very limited. Um, and then there are some other things that are, you know, a little bit uh, that vary by the by 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 each individual or each community. So some unbiased, uh, unconscious biases towards certain groups of uh, of entrepreneurs. Um, there are often, um, you know, being a barrier for them. And for when you talk about the immigrant um, entrepreneurs, the Latinos, the Pacific Islanders or some other immigrants that are here in our in our region, uh, they also face additional challenges like language barriers, like cultural barriers, and even the the fact that sometimes they they don't feel that they belong in the in the community. You know, they feel like they they are an outsider in the in in the community. It it creates kind of like a sense of of lack of trust in a way. They don't trust the, like the people that surround them. And that lack of trust also limits them in the ability to reach out for help and, the, and, and reach out for additional resources. So those are some of the barriers and the, and the things that we see consistently uh, showing up in the entrepreneurs that come um, join our program. I, I really, um, I want to come back to something you said, which is, folks feeling welcome. We, we talk about that and that's important to us at the foundation. And I think like holistically for folks here in 
Northwest Arkansas, the desire. And I think we can all relate to that. You also touched upon a couple of things I just want to lift up for the folks joining is you're working with some of the fastest growing populations here in Northwest Arkansas, the, the Latino community. And I think some folks may not know this, but it's historic. We have one of the largest Marshallese populations in the country here in Northwest Arkansas, both those areas just really assets to the region. So you've, you've talked about what folks will say and the barriers they face. How does E4ALL actually help them? Could you give me you know, a couple of examples of how you go about helping them? What kind of doors you help open or resources you provide? Absolutely. So we have two different programs that we have designed to help these entrepreneurs. We have a pitch competition and we have an accelerator program. But really, the, the one that provides the most help to entrepreneurs is the accelerator. Um, that's a one year long program that is divided into different sections. The first section is the planning and it, it, it encompasses about 12 weeks. And during those 12 weeks, the entrepreneurs have to attend classes twice a week. Uh, virtually, obviously, because we're in extended uh, region, so it's hard for them to, you know, drive to a specific place. So uh, those classes are specifically designed for them to plan, to take a step back, whether, you know, they can be at an idea stage, they can be in a startup stage, or they can be, they, they, they can have a business that has been operating for a long time. Uh, but the, the purpose of our program is to take a step back Think about what are the most important aspects of your business that you need to figure out in order to build a strong foundation for your business. And that's the accelerator, what's designed for. And that's what they are working on on, on, on a daily basis when they are attending classes and, and, uh, and, and building that plan. In addition to the to the classes, we also provide mentoring mentoring services. And, and, and when I say that is we not if for all. So we go out and recruit those mentors from the community. These are volunteer people that are volunteering about 30 hours um, to mentor one entrepreneur. And uh, and each entrepreneur gets two mentors that are going to be working with her the whole program the whole year that they're going to be going through the program um, and 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 also important to mention is that the people that come teach the classes the the facilitators of the classes even though we have already created the curriculum we have already the presentations for the classes we look for experts here in the in the region that that understand that topic really well and that can facilitate the the you know the the class with the students and all those two things, the mentors and the um, and the and the facilitators, the the teachers, are super important because they are expanding those business networks that we talked about previously. That was one of the barriers that we see um, for the entrepreneurs. So they are meeting about between twenty five to thirty new you know leaders in the community that can open up new doors for them and that can expand those networks for them. Um, so that's the first part of the program. The second part, uh, when we finish those 12 weeks, we move into the execution or the uh, or the bringing to life uh, part of the program. So all the plan that they put together in the first 12 weeks, they're going to start executing in the second half. Um, and for that part, we also start giving them some um, seed funding to invest in their business. And the idea of the seed funding First, it's, it, we don't give it to everyone. We give it to those entrepreneurs that show the most commitment to both their business and, and our program. So they, we look at attendance to classes. We look at uh, the feedback from the mentors. We look at the feedback from their peers, the feedback from the facilitators that are, that are coming to teach the classes and our own staff as well provide feedback. So, uh, so each quarter we give some of them so some seed funding so they can uh, have an immediate impact on their business. Invest in something that uh, can can help them continue moving forward with their with their business or their or their idea, depending on where they are. Um, so, 
I know it was a little bit long, but that's basically what the accelerator program uh, uh, does and how we have designed. Uh, well, and, and you know, and, and the seed funding in a way it also helps with uh, the the access to capital portion of it. Although really, where we try to focus the the, the access to capital uh, barrier is we have a panel uh, during the program during the twelve weeks where we invite all these financial institutions that. Obviously, you know, banks are included, but also we invite all other um, financial institutions that are providing access to underserved individuals in the community that have better terms, better, um, you know, more flexibility to give them access to capital. So the CDFIs or uh, like Forge, like Communities Unlimited, like Arkansas Capital or uh, organizations like Kiva that there are crowd funding or crowd lending in this case, uh, but that, are, that that you guys support as well. And that thanks to you, they get a one-on-one, -on -one, a two-on-one, -on -one, I think, a match on every dollar that it's lent to people. So all those um, super helpful resources, we bring them to them during that panel to our entrepreneurs so they know that they are available to them and they can start building relationships with those institutions. So when the time comes uh, and they need the money, they can they know who to, who to go to and how to access that capital. That's great. Hey, I really appreciate the thoroughness. Like they, you talked about these different aspects of the program that EFRL offers. And I wanna dig down a little deeper on a couple of those, but Juan, I wanna ask you a question. Uh, one is, you know, the importance of the mentors. If someone that's participating today would like to become a mentor, could they reach out to you and E4All and they could find a way to potentially volunteer their time? Absolutely. I I would love to uh, meet with any, uh, any person that is interested, not only as a mentor. So, uh, just to, to give you an idea, Robert, we uh, we use the help of about 200 volunteers every year in our organization Impressive. between uh, the people that are mentoring, that are about 90 mentors that we recruit every, every year to help our entrepreneurs, but also the specialists that are coming to teach the classes, people that help us um, assess the applications. So the, like all the applications that we receive, since my team and I were pretty much meeting every single entrepreneur that are applying to the program. We may sometimes have a bias towards one or the other. So we use the help of uh, volunteers to, to assess all the applications and to give us a, you know, an unbiased assessment of the entrepreneur and the idea to make sure that we're selecting the right candidates into or inv inviting the right candidates into our program. And also we have a process to interview some of the semifinalists. And those interviewers, again, they are volunteers. So there are a, a variety of volunteer roles that people can um, you know, play when when they join our organization as a volunteer. So I would love to talk to anybody who's more uh, who wants to learn more about any of these opportunities. Awesome. No, thank you. I just want to give you a chance to talk because I have a feeling folks will want to know that. But I want to come back to something you said. So a lot of folks know a show called Shark Tank. They've watched it. Some people might be big fans of it, and they see people come in and this term pitch. Because I know we're not talking about like pitching a baseball or a softball. <laughs> We're not talking about a cricket pitch, but you're talking about people pitching their ideas, like putting them out to somebody. So give me a, like a, a little bit of a sense and the audience a sense, like what does that look like How, when someone's up there pitching and, and what might they get in return after they pitch? Absolutely. So our pitch contest, as you, as you said, is just like Shark Tank, uh, but we like to call it it's Shark Tank without the teeth. So it's a friendly <laughs> version of Shark Tank. Um, and in essence, it's, you know, it's the same, it has the same, um, the same purpose of, of, of any other pitch contest. We ask them to pitch their idea for two and a half minutes in exchange, and, and some of them may win some cash prizes, right, to, to, for, for their pitch. But in reality, um, the, the underlying goal of our, of our pitch competition is a little bit different. What we want to achieve with our pitch competition is for those folks who have an idea to think uh, what is the problem that this idea that they have is trying to solve. Uh, and if there's enough people in the market 
looking for that solution and if they're willing to pay the price that they're asking for that solution. Because at the end of the day, what we've seen time and time again is that the second um, most important reason why a business goes out of business is because there's not a market for them. Uh, there's not like there's not enough size for the market. So that's that's the whole idea of, of the pitch competition to get them to think uh, those three things. Um, so, um, you know, that's that's basically the, the bulk of it. So they go, we select six, six people uh, at the event. We invite the community to attend the event and at the event, people the, the public chooses one more pitcher. They vote for one that wasn't selected um, during the, the, the traditional selecting process. And, and that person also gets to pitch their idea uh, uh, to give an opportunity to the public as well to give their opinion and to invite somebody else to, to pitch their idea. So we this contest, we do it in English and Spanish. So we can give more opportunity to both the largest um, minority group in, in the region, that is the Latino community, and then the, the general population. Thank, thanks for giving a sense of like what that looks like. And I'm going to ask a similar question. So I bet folks heard that and they think, ah, maybe I would love to come into one of those pitch competitions. I'd love to help kind of enter my opinion. Could they also contact you if they would be interested in doing that? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, it can be also all the judges that we recruit for the pitch competition are volunteers so if 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 you feel like you would like to uh you know be one of the judges or be one of the people that are helping us select the pitchers or if you want to pitch your idea please reach out to me and and we'll be happy to uh, give you more information about these opportunities Excellent. i think there's a real chance you might get some Folks who were interested. So I just want to give you a chance to tell folks about that. Thank you. Um, I loved your line about, uh, I think you said Shark Tank without the teeth. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to forget that one. So thanks for <laughs> highlighting that. I, you know, when we think about at the foundation, what makes a vibrant and inclusive community, it, it is one that affords opportunity for all. And entrepreneurs, small businesses, uh, no matter if it's Northwest Arkansas or another part of the country, but here in Northwest Arkansas, it's incredibly essential to have them as part of the community. They are the source of job creation in the United States. They are certainly a huge source. And I always think with an entrepreneur, it takes an incredible amount of courage. If you're going out there as an entrepreneur, you have this idea to actually make it happen is a big step and i really appreciate what e for all is doing because i suspect a lot of the folks are coming and they might be a little timid about putting their idea out there and you really embolden them by giving them the tools and the resources the confidence and i can imagine what a mentor does because i'm a big believer in that what they're able to afford folks and i just want to lift up that you know sam Walton once said that good ideas come from anywhere. You just have to look for it. And I think that's really significant when we think about entrepreneurs, because these are individuals, the idea is just kicking around and you just need to be able to bring it out. Um, we want to support people, communities that are endeavoring to do this and bring out their ideas to make this area as vibrant and inclusive as possible. And we are really happy to learn and lead together. This is the way we work with our partners and we fundamentally embrace this idea that the best ideas come from the communities and the people in them. Um, I just want to give you a, a chance to, to say a bit more about the talent and anything else you'd like to add, Rodrigo. You know, I think that what you said, Robert, is is right on. I, I think that the talent that you, we see here in the region is amazing. Um, I don't, I, 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 I I don't think we have anything to ask to other cities, New York, uh, Napa. I think that there's a lot of talented people here in Northwest Arkansas that can create, uh, you know, great things in the future. Um, I do, I, I, you know, our, the entrepreneurs, and, 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 and I'm going to talk in general about all the entrepreneurs that I've met here in Northwest Arkansas, both that participate in our program and that I've met through other programs and other things. But I think something that I've seen uh, time and time again is that these are uh, really hardworking, committed, innovative individuals that are 
you know, that are here to, to not only do better for themselves and their families, but also to create a more thriving, exciting, energetic community. And I think that that's the big difference with other, um, other communities that I've seen, uh, you know, happening these kind of like entrepreneurial uh, ecosystems is that here people are not only excited to create something for themselves, but for the community that surrounds them. Uh, and they're building these for everyone, and that's uh, and that's something that I that really fills me uh, uh, up with joy because it's something that it, you don't see this often. It's 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 a unique uh, place where we live, and the people make it that way. Um, so to me, uh, that that has been to me what what I what you know what one of the reasons or probably the main reason why I enjoy so much what I do uh, and what we are doing here at Nor in Northwest Arkansas with Entrepreneurship for All because you, I get to meet all these individuals that they inspire me every day and that they give me a reason to you know wake up and continue working and trying to help as many people as possible because all of us are working together for the same goal that is making um, you know Northwest Arkansas the best place to live. Wonderful. No, and I, your work, the work of your team, the work of your board, as well as our partners that we get the privilege of working with here in North, you inspire us. So thank you for what you do every day, Rodrigo. Thanks for being such a positive force for good here in Northwest Arkansas. Really appreciate the work of your team. And, and I always want to just compliment the board. I know the board is a key part of the organization. So thank you to your board members as well. And with that, um, I, I just want to close out, give you a huge thanks, Rodrigo, for taking time out of a very busy day and giving everyone here a chance to learn more about the awesome work that e for all is doing. Thank you. No, no. Thank you, Robert. And thank you, guys, uh, the Walton family, you, Robert, Jillian, and everybody that has been uh, supporting us at the Walton family because we not only have seen you know your support in every like in our everyday activities but we feel it and we uh, and that has helped us a lot that has helped a lot of doors and a lot of uh, different um, resources so thank you guys for all the support that you've given us and and thank you i totally agree with you thank you to our board our board has been extremely supportive we have a very diverse and very unique board um, that are very involved and that they have also worked really, really hard to help us um, get where we are today. So thank you as well. And again, thank you to my team. Amazing team that I have. Wonderful. Thank you. And thanks everybody for joining today. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and a great weekend ahead. Take care. Have a good day.